Hello, hello, it's me, the Metaverse Explorer. On the 21st of August, I'm here to keep you updated on what's happening in Star Atlas. Thank you very much for your time. Make sure you like and subscribe because I will be doing more videos for Star Atlas. You guys know this already, so please stick around for the journey. We start today with the Pierce D9 new ship, which launched about two days ago. This is um, a first salvage ship that we have access to, right? First salvage ship. We've got fighters, we've got freighters, we've got transport, we've got racers. This is the first salvage ship. So it's a little bit of a big deal, maybe a, a smaller deal. Really, I, I don't really know what kind of deal it is. Let's just have a look at the ship and see what it actually is. So this is a $30,000 ship. My God, who is going to buy this ship? Because we don't really know at the moment what salvages are going to have, uh, what function they're going to have in the actual Scream game. Maybe in UE5 game, possibly, but in the Scream game, we don't know. We haven't been given any information. Let's read it. Pierce is proud to bring you the premier flagship salvage craft in the galaxy. D9 sports an expansive bridge to oversee all your ship's various operations. Equipped to shipbreak the capitalist wrecks in any sector with a proverbial pocket knife of tools at your convenience. Includes four enormous robotic arms, tractors, beams, and drone ports to the hilt. It boasts an abundance of cargo space to make quick work of any debris field full of flotsam and jetsam. I've, I know flotsam, never heard of jetsam. Um, I, I assume it's space junk, I, I think. Descend to the below decks and check out all the onboard processing, recycling and refinement facilities whirring away while, you, while you're underway. Salvage the stars at the helm of your own PSD-9. Now, this ship, there is only 460 of them. My God, very small supply. You know why? Because it's a legendary ship. The legendary ladies and, men, ladies and gentlemen, it is a capital ship which commands a $30,000 price tag. Look at the crew members. One captain, two pilot, two co-pilot, scanner, turret, drone, engineer, repair, tractor beam operator, cargo foreman, and salvage operator. This is the first we're seeing of a salvage operator. Any components stick out to you, really? Radar, tractor beam, shield, gen... No, well, I... Uh, Nah, th these are the capital, the, nothing serious, because the ship itself is a capital, so I expect these to be at least a capital or one above. In the case of like the uh, uh, ATS Enforcer, where it had a, it was a medium ship, but it had a capital slot for a weapon, so nothing serious there. I don't get anything. Uh, I would expect, ah, uh, you know what, this is, this is a legendary kind of ship, I would assume that it will have some kind of a... Uh, um, uh, better st stats than this, so uh, a little bit uh, on the um, on the uh, on the disappointing side there. Let's look at some pictures of this PSD9, and man, it looks good. It looks like a tick, to be honest. It looks like a tick. What do you guys think? Uh, I don't know any other uh, words for it, and uh, not not in English, but it looks like a tick. Let's have a look at some of these pictures. See what you like. Do you like this ship? Like it looks good. The PS line itself is very sleek, very good, um, and look at the lasers coming out from the drone ports. Yeah. Probably to salvage stuff, cut it in half so you, it can come on board. Very, very good pictures. It actually looks like it's the same picture, just from different angles, being honest. Um, this is very interesting, right? Now, I really hope this is somewhere in the showroom where you can actually walk next to some of these drones. So you can see the level of detail that these guys put in. Because there is a lot of detail that people actually put into here. All right, let's have a keep going. This is the bridge, man. It looks crazy. These PS ships have like Star Wars... Uh, kind of uh, uh, sci-fi tech uh, uh, stuff going on here. Now, look at that. Now, that is industrious. Look at how crazy that looks, right? Look at that. There's so, it looks like a giant uh, um, manufacturing plant with automation and thing going around everywhere. I love it. I love it, right? If this is what you're interested in, right? I don't know what this place is. It doesn't really say. It's got some writing here. Let's keep going. And just some schematics for us. Maybe, we, maybe we'll be able to see. Can you zoom in on these? No, you can't zoom in on these. That's all right. So that's the PSD9. Uh, are you guys interested in this? Let's actually go and see how many have sold, if any have sold at the moment. Let's go back to the marketplace. Pepe, thank you very much for joining us. He's here to remind you to like and subscribe, ladies and gentlemen. So we know that the there is actually 460 of these uh, babies. There's 240 here, 128. So that's uh, 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 368. 368 plus let's have a look let's have a look here 368 plus uh 60 
Never mind this, don't worry about this at all. This is my mistake. But 60 plus 32. 460. No ships have been sold. None of these ships have been sold, which is quite unfortunate. We expect this, right? No one has 30k lying around at the moment in the bear market. So I, do, I didn't think this would actually sell. So no problems. Let's go ahead and look at what else is happening. So the Star Atlas Twitter did actually tweet something um, about uh, something uh, uh, that really caught some people's attention. It was a slightly controversial, a little bit, really. Um, so it's a, just a tiny detail in a vast galaxy, and yet you feel its power emanating from every polished groove on the surface. Unreal. This is an in-game view of the Ogrika Thripid spaceship, an embodiment of the glorious and luxurious Punab culture. So, I know you guys have seen the Ogrika Thripid before. It's kind of like a golden feeling ship. It looks like a, maybe a floating space octopus, or whatever you want to call it. Um, this is a picture of, the, I think they're just trying to demonstrate the capability of UE5 and how much detail they're putting for all of these ships, right? Look at the level of detail in this, I don't know, maybe a seat. Uh, it looks like it because that looks like a seat behind there and that this looks like ex uh, that that whole thing there and this whole thing here as well it just looks like that but look at the detail on this right this is awesome this is really really awesome now how are we actually going to experience this we are not going to experience this in scream at all right this is only for the ue5 uh maybe the showroom module possibly if you're able to walk around the ogrika thripid but we know the thripid is not one of the first ones we'll see we'll see like the at psx4 which i think we have access to already well we don't have access to it but it's the first ones we'll probably be able to see but look at this detail do you like this detail like uh so the the controversy was that um one guy i, I saw one guy on twitter say like why are you guys spending an enormous amount of time on just this small pattern on this like one small ship like that means if you're going to put this level of detail you'll never finish any of the ships because it'll take you too damn long right that was their argument and i think i don't remember exactly what the response was but uh michael uh, wagner or maybe him or someone else from the team was like no you have to understand this is this is the process like we're putting the underlying foundations to be able to do this so that it's going to be much, much easier. We can replicate this on all the different uh, uh, Thripid ships if we need to. Um, honestly, I'm um, I half half on this because I honestly feel like they shouldn't be putting so much work into all the design at the moment because they need to have a product that you can ship first. So you need to have Scream going first. Like it doesn't have to be this detailed. Put like one design on it, right? Or use this one design for all of them and then don't touch it again until you have like a, a better product to showcase it in. Um, so I, I'm like, yeah, I get it. Like it's good to have all of these details and stuff, but at the same time, ship the product. I mean, um, yeah, I. Wh what do I know, man? Maybe maybe this took them five minutes to do because it's UE5. What do we know? Like, are you a dev? Am I a dev? No, we, we're not designers. This, this could have been really easy for them. We don't know, but we do appreciate it. Look at the detail on this. This is what, if you have an Ogrika Thribbit, congratulations, because your ship looks bomb. Your ship, your ship looks really good. Now, let's end it with um, Tales from um, Jirio. The truth about Jirio. Star Atlas roadmap scan number 17. A terrible secret is discovered in the forgotten laboratory in the mines of Jirio. And Wen's group decides to take action. But before they can do anything, they must first escape the mines of where Atoff sleeps. Ooh. I really hope this turns into like a boss battle, you know. I really, really hope this is like a boss. Because this is the second time I think we've heard of Atoff, right? I love this image as well, by the way. The surface stillness of ice and cold hides the monster that sleeps below. Metaverse in light speed expansion. Now, I'm not going to ruin the whole story for you, right? You go ahead and read it if you want. Uh, my girlfriend rugged us on this. <laughs> if you know, you know. Um, one thing I did really notice, guys. So they use the term, like, of course, we read these and we're trying to pick up on any clues at all. I, they mentioned Etherfall, which is uh, um, a resource that they mentioned previously. They used it five times in this article, which is a lot, right? I think he might be drawing some of these names from the the team itself, the team themselves, because they're probably uh, looking at all the um, the R twenties now, because we're going to have to shift into creating our own, crafting our own resources. And of course, one of the major fuel source is probably going to be ethyl. It's not going to be called food, fuel, ammo. It'll be called ethyl. And how to make ethyl? You need ethyl and folium, or you need this and that. All these resources. They 
used it five times. I think that's not a coincidence, you know. I think they're trying to drown it into the people who play this, like, oh, I know Etherfall, it's a fuel. Easy, right? Pepe, welcome back, welcome back. Okay, so that's what I picked up on just uh, uh, superficially. Let's go ahead and read some of the roadmap scan updates. And I highlighted them to make it a bit easier. I finally got a highlighter because I thought, hey, why not? The showroom, UE5 showroom. Everything is basically done. The concept art is done. The art itself is done. UX, is, UX design is still building. Um, the game design is done. Blockchain side is done. Gameplay done. Oh my God. So what are you actually waiting for, guys? They're waiting for the product distribution works. This is how they're going to start distributing the UE5 client so people can experience it. Now, my small uh, kind of uh, uh, um, hunch or hint or, or like uh, uh, what I think is going to happen is that they're actually going to distribute it through a um, uh, Epic Games or UE5 kind of launcher where you can experience lots of different uh, like other UE5 uh, uh, experiences of other companies making their own showcases. I think uh, Star Atlas might be working either with Epic Games or going to be a launcher or uh, they're going to distribute it where they're going to get more eyes on it. I think that's why they're waiting. That's what I think so far. You let me know what you think as well. Um, so upcoming activities for that, they're going to finish the product distribution works, which is what we know already. Scream V1. Lots of this stuff has been copy pasted from the last week, but some new things I did notice in here is that they're continuing to deliver fleet programs and the sector program. So remember, there's going to be different sectors in the screen because you'll have, you know, a galaxy and then the galaxy uh, is probably, oh, it'll be one galaxy, I think. Actually, I don't know if it's more than one galaxy. I don't, I, I'm just making shit up here. Um, the sector program, the sector is the section of like this mud section or like this Ooster section or the, uh, the Oni section. And then you might have different sectors in there with different planets that you can mine on, different star bases in each sector. And it's possible you could only have like two or three star bases in one sector because then it gets too overcrowded or the resource, the resource courts gets exponentially higher and it's not worth it. One thing I did notice here is um, added the Calico Guardian metrics into Scream to playtest and added updated action hub and action menus. Ooh, sounds interesting. Can we see that uh, Calico Guardian metrics, please, you guys? I, I know you watch these videos. Can you please, uh, sorry, can you please uh, hook a brother up? Um, added higher fidelity mining functionality. Awesome. I want to see that too. And working on star bases and planets. Amazing. Next thing, economic modeling for the hangar spaces. LP, which is the um, uh, loyalty points, remember? Play the game, you'll earn loyalty points, and that's how you're actually able to progress and get like, um, um, not resources, but like get access to the, the different factions or get access to blueprints, uh, fleet configuration, econometrics, and score to the trans, uh, and, and score to scream transition strategy. So they're already, so that means, you know, they're getting closer, right? Every report they get closer they're now thinking about how they're going to transition from score to scream because remember right now in score you just sh you just uh um stake and you earn that's it you people are going to be playing the scream and there's going to be a smooth transition previously i did say that there was going to be a supply shock for all the resources but michael wagner and everyone came back and says no we they're not actually going to be a supply shock because we're going to wean it slowly off while the crafting of these resources come up and so they're going to like intersect at a good level where um, um, the, the score rewards will still be going. The supplies will be given out still by, um, the team itself and people will start, still start crafting. And once people get up crafting to a critical level, they might start tapering off all the actual, um, 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 resources themselves. Right. So they're thinking about the transition strategy. Very good. Now the Star Atlas DAO. One thing I did notice here is it's feature complete on the Atlas locking. Uh, remember, we've been able to lock Polis for a while now. You're probably collecting your rewards every week, give or take. Are you compounding it? I hear a lot of people actually just compounding it for the same five years. Remember, every time you click compound again for the five years, it relocks it for five years, okay? So you'll, you'll, it'll take a long time. Some people I've seen are just taking the rewards and locking it for two weeks at least so that they get a little bit of ROI from it, okay? Uh, Atlas is now coming where you'll be able to get a 6% fee reduction on the marketplace and oh Jesus Christ, you guys in the foundation remain to calm down about this fee. I asked one question and a lot of people just coming out of nowhere and saying, oh, they're going to cut into profits, margins, all of this sort of stuff. Guys, it's a game. 
you just play the game. Don't worry about the six little 6% tax here and there, okay? If you play the game, you find a, a rare item and no one's going to care about, you're not going to care about the 6% uh, marketplace fee, right? If you're worried about it, reduce it a little bit by locking some Atlas. How are you going to get some Atlas? Play the game, okay? Um, I don't want to sound condescending, but like uh, there were a lot of people just uh, harping on and on and on about the um, marketplace fee and the resources and stuff in the foundation room. I don't talk there very much. I look, I read stuff. If I think something is really worth portraying to you guys or giving to you guys uh, as my viewers, I would definitely do that. But uh, at the moment, I didn't really see anything that was that was newsworthy for you, I guess. Pepe, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, so on the Playstar Atlas website itself, they uh, they fix some bugs, which is uh, filtered improperly formatted orders from the marketplace. I know that the marketplace is still um, in its infancy. There are some small bugs here and there. Um, I don't have much trouble with it. I just refresh it, do a hard refresh if I need to. Now, one thing you guys need to actually know, um, Star Atlas has dropped the Solid wallets. Solid was one of the first like uh, open source wallets for Solana, okay? A lot of stuff is on there still. Like I have a still a Solid wallet and I still have Star Atlas items on the Solid wallet. So what I have to do now is you have to use Phantom, okay? You have to use another Solana wallet, import your seed into that, wa into that uh, uh, wallet interface. Um, so when you created your Solid wallet, you'll have a seed phrase, 12, 20 seed phrases, okay? You'll be able to uh, uh, use those same, same seed phrases on like Soulflare or Phantom, any of the other Solana wallets, and use that to interact with um, Star Atlas if you need to. If you don't want to, what I would suggest if you already have a Phantom wallet, log in uh, uh, using like Step Finance possibly, and log in using your Solid account, and then you'll have all your assets at the bottom as NFTs. Just send those assets to another Phantom wallet because Star Atlas is no longer allowing you to use Solid wallets, okay? Or Soleil, the, the, the French term, Soleil. Um, but they have included support for Exodus and Coinbase. Very interesting. Coinbase wallet. Possible listing on Coinbase? Are they actually on Coinbase yet? I don't know. They may be. I, I don't pay attention to this stuff. Uh, I just want to play the game. And one thing I noticed, there is a new homepage or landing page coming. Awesome. It's in the pipeline. It's not coming yet. It'll come later. later. And there's also table changes throughout the marketplace. So guys, I'm going to leave it here. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been a little bit informative for you. I'll try to keep it under 20 minutes as I can, but sometimes there's a lot of stuff to talk and I can keep talking. Um, I don't want to do that because I know your time is precious. So I'm going to leave it here. Thank you very much for watching. This is Metaverse Explorer on the 21st of August. Ciao for now.